Um, concerns have continued to mount about the level of transparency in the oil and gas sector as a recent report by the Nigerian Natural Resource Charter revealed that the operations and award of contracts in the sector remain shrouded in secrecy. Now, even former President Obasanjo just recently, during the launch of his book that uh, the court has said is uh, contempt of court, he did say something along the same line and that uh, there are issues with our uh, oil sector. General Mohammed Buhari, who has been elected as the representative of the flag bearer, the presidential flag bearer of APC, also said something similar along the lines of. And everybody NFPC. seems to be saying the same thing. Everybody is singing from the same hymn sheet. So we do need to look at this this morning and to have the conversation with us. We've got uh, Mr. Dane Ajimogobia, who is a former Minister of Foreign Affairs in Nigeria and also he is the Chairman of the Board of uh, Nigerian Natural Resource Charter. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me. Now, we look at our oil sector, there are a number of things that's been said to be wrong with it. Uh, some people have said all kinds of things. but. When you look at the benchmarking that we've got now, is this as good as it gets for us? Well, I mean, there are obviously issues with the oil sector, and I think everyone um, who's knowledgeable about the oil sector would admit that. Uh, what we've done at the um, National, uh, Nat Nat Nigerian National Resource uh, Charter is to look at the industry and benchmark it against the best practices, international best practices, of natural resource management um, from extracting the natural resource, in our case oil, uh, from under the ground to sustainable development above the ground. And to do that, we've 12 precepts were de developed across that decision-making chain. And all we've done is looked at the Nigerian oil and gas industry. Um, it was first done in 2012 and benchmarked the processes that exist in Nigeria against these, these 12 precepts. Um, and the precepts cover uh, social issues, um, core industry issues, and public finance issues relating to the oil and gas um, sector. And what we've done is using a, a traffic light system. Of if, if the question you ask with regard to um, performance of the industry in one of these, um, against one of these precepts, is yes, then you get a green, which means you know, you're in conformity with best practice. Um, if it's no, then it's red. And if it's neither yes nor no, then it's amber. Um, and then there's another, another sort of index of if it's amber, but it's moving towards green, then we have an arrow that shows that it's, it's going up. And if it's moving towards red, uh, then we have an hour going down. But th that's essentially what this is all about. So when you look at the fact that Nigeria is now ranked uh, 42nd out of 58 countries all around the world in 2013, 42nd, that's how many, just about, about 16 just below the bottom of the world. In what? Uh, uh, it says here that according to a report, uh, Nigeria scored 38% in all sector reporting practice, ranking 42nd of 58 countries in 2013. And that's um, still, I think, linked up to this benchmarking exercise that said that um, information, inadequate information, insufficient audits, and poor financing report standards for public entities like the NNPC continue to undermine the industry. Um, Processes. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, let's, let's talk about the NMPC in particular. Um, the, one of the findings was that between 2012 and 2014, there wasn't a significant change in, in the indices that we, we discovered. And we've been working with another very important group, the uh, Center for Public uh, Policy Alternatives. It's a group, um, interestingly, um, headed, founded by a, a medical person, a dentist, uh, um, Dr. Falaran Smith who set up a think tank um, in conjunction with some um, technical partners um, to help with research to, um, things like this. And they've worked with us. In fact, they actually did a lot of the research for the 2014 uh, benchmarking exercise. Um, and I, I think that the one of the things that's been lost on, on, on all of us 
was the original intent behind the Petroleum Industry Bill, uh, which was to make the uh, national company, NNPC, a commercial, viable commercial entity, just like many of all the others, the Exxon Mobiles and the Chevrons and so on, um, which would itself uh, create a transparent platform because you know you have to if you're working in the private sector and working in that sort of field then you have to be transparent. Um, but it, it's it's unfortunate the PIB has got bogged down with so many other things, including issues of revenue allocation, um, which it hasn't passed. And that we've made that observation as well that um, the issues of transparency and accountability and so on haven't made significant process. It gives well. one some amount of worry, though, when we say that, yes, the PIB, on the one hand, a lot of Nigerians are concerned that we're still uh, pacifying around passing the PIB bill. We saw uh, Mrs. Desani Alison Maduke, who was uh, recently, who's recently been named the chairperson of OPEC, referring to the fact that it is down to the National Assembly to pass that bill. They've done everything that needs to be done. But pending when that bill becomes an act of uh, law in Nigeria, pending when that happens, what is stopping the federal government and everybody in Nigeria from insisting that NNPC has got to do better than they're doing now? Well, that's, that's again, I, I go back to you know, why I'm here and what this exercise is about. It, it, it sets up um, a framework providing tools for decision makers to follow and to judge performance in the industry against these internationally recognized benchmarks. It's not we're not prescribing anything, we're not criticizing um, you know, the government or its policies. We're simply reviewing, objectively reviewing what's happening in our space um, against international be best practice. Um, what should we be doing? What, should, what are the things that we should be looking at? And providing this as a as a, a working tool for policymakers, and I think it's very appropriate that this should be coming out um, at this time when we're going into another cycle of elections um, for you know, the, the government and any other um, aspiring governments um, to look at this and see you know what would we do if we had a chance, um, and for the government to look at itself and say. Could we do better if we get re-elected? So PIB or no, sorry, PIB or no PIB then, is there any way we can look at, because nothing is going to happen before the next election? I, I, think, I think there's much that could be done. I mean, just from speaking from one who had the privilege of supervising the sector at one time, um, the, you would have noticed that in recent times there's been a lot of divestment from the international oil companies, and, and Nigerian indigenous companies have taken up some of this flap. That's, a, that's a, a, a good pointer, and I think it's one of the things that the government, this government must be commended for. When I was in the petroleum ministry, um, indigenous production was probably in the region of 1 or 2 percent. Um, today it's up in you know, double digits probably, and, and growing. So I think that's, um, the government must get kudos uh, for that. On the other side of the um, impact, environmental in impact on the um, the local communities, it's not good. You know, um, pollution is still at a very high level. Gas flaring is still a very high level. Um, the impact on the local communities, the benefits to them, is still minimal. Um, so you'd, you'd see a score of red, for example, um, on the side of indigenous perform participation in the industry. Um, it'd probably be green if we had a specific index for that. Um, but. Going back to the point you, the question you asked, the international oil companies are focusing now on offshore oil, right? Um, at the time the 1993 production sharing contracts were signed, the, because of the price of oil and the cost of development of offshore assets, um, the fiscal terms were very generous to encourage international oil companies to explore oil offshore. Um, today, those costs have come down dramatically. Um, and those contracts, I mean, sanctity of contract means if you sign a contract with me, then you have to be bound by it for the duration of the contract. Fortunately, some of those contracts have expired, and so they can be renegotiated regardless of whether the PIB is passed or not. Even those that exist have um, reopening clauses. Um, one of them is that if the oil price goes above $20, 20 to above $100, you know, so that's a reopening clause. If there are huge discoveries of about 500 million barrels of oil, 
um, that would be another reopening. If you go back to the contract and revisit it, look, you've got this, this huge discovery, we have to renegotiate. Or if um, there's more than 10 years have passed since the contract was signed, again, we can go and reopen. Now, in, in our case, all three reopening circumstances exist. It's oil prices above $20, even with the current dip. Um, except the other one, there are no discoveries because why are there no discoveries? Because the number of rigs that are operating have declined rather than increasing, and, and that's because again, part of the PIB fiscal terms, people aren't going to invest in a, a sector if they don't know what the terms of um, what the engagement will be. But I think it's possible to deal with some of these issues contractually, um, so that the industry can um, can develop. I and mean, if you look at Angola and um, production in Angola and reserves you'll see that there's much more activity there than there is here. And they, they have the same challenges we have in terms of transparency, accountability, and so on. But they're making progress. And we also, we don't seem to be expanding uh, our reserves or our production. Uh, there was a target to grow our production to 4 million barrels a day by the year 2020, and to grow our reserves to 40 billion barrels uh, by the same year. Um, it doesn't seem that that's, that's likely to happen. In, 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 any, in, in fact, the, the opposite is happening. Uh, reserves are actually... In, you would, in you would say 